Hey, what's going on everyone? I'm happy and uh, excited to announce the newest version of my favorite system administration book right here. I love this thing. This is the fifth edition of the Unix and Linux system administration handbook. My old copy, the fourth edition, is in tatters. It is probably the book that accompanied me through like the biggest chunk of my career, like the biggest chunk of my learning path uh, with Linux. When I bought it, I was at best a junior Linux admin. Um, and I honestly, um, actually, I think I've got the an even older version kicking around here. Yeah, so I do have an older version of this. This is the 1989 version. Uh, I believe it's the original. Uh, so uh, where does that put us? It puts us at almost uh, 30 years. Um, that this has been a kind of like Unix and now Linux system administration uh, guide. Um, oh my god, it still has some of the original bookmarks I put in here. Yeah, chapter 17, news for Usenet. Oh my god, yeah, when I was just getting into Usenet. I read this when I was probably 14 years old, maybe 15. Uh, or chunks of it. Cron, Periodic Processes, Chapter 21. This is where it all started, guys. This is where the Tutorial Linux journey started. <laughs> wow. I'm glad I just remembered that I still had that kicking around. Um, obviously, the uh, it's grown a bit. These are the first edition and the fifth edition right next to each other. Um, whoever Bill Nold is, I'm sorry. Uh, I didn't steal this book from you, but it did end up with me. So thank you for your contribution to Unix and Linux system administration. I hope it's been worth it. Uh, but let's talk about the new version. This is a completely overhauled, uh, updated, totally up-to-date version of the book. Um, there's a bunch of changes that I'll talk about from the last edition, but I just want to say this is, in my mind, the standard text of system administration on Unix and Linux systems. Like, that's just, it is what it is. Every sysadmin should own a copy of this. This is one of the most comprehensive, I don't know how actually they managed to be as comprehensive as they are, but one of the most comprehensive, readable, useful books I have ever bought. It's incredible. So, this book, the earlier edition of it, has accompanied me through the vast majority of my career, and I would say it's the reference that I still look at the most. Um, I got this book, started reading, and I was like, holy crap, this, it was like reading a novel. Like, my girlfriend would be sleeping next to me, and I'd be reading this late at night, like with the light on, as if it was like some kind of Dan Brown thriller. Um, and maybe, you know, I'm a hopeless nerd. I mean, that's also true, but it is actually written in the most approachable way that I've ever seen a tech book written in. This is the kind of book where you spend 50 or 60 bucks on it once or twice in your career when a new edition comes out, and it makes you a million dollars over the course of your career. You know what I mean? I'm going to talk about uh, some of the things that I think are amazing about this book. I'm going to talk about some of the things I wish it did a little bit differently. This is a very much overhauled um, edition. A lot of old things have been removed and a lot of new things have been added, and I'll talk about what those things are specifically and how they kind of affected my experience of this. Um, just going to go very quickly through the table of contents. And if you do buy it, if you want to support Tutorial Linux, I have an affiliate link at the bottom. Uh, it'll just take you to Amazon, and I will make some small percentage of a commission uh, off of each sale, which I can promise you will go towards more videos and beer. An equal balance of those things. Um, so... I'm gonna just very quickly read the like chapter or section headers. Um, so chapter one, where to start, essential duties of a sysadmin, um, different Linux distributions, where to find documentation, how to learn in specializations and disciplines that there are uh, for system administration. Uh, chapter two is booting and system management. I'm gonna actually stop being so specific now. Um, which goes over like the Linux and Unix boot process, how that works. Um, chapter three is access control, root powers, etc. A lot of this stuff I've covered on the channel. 
uh, process control, how Unix processes work. Um, the file system, basic file system knowledge that every sysadmin needs. Software installation and management, scripting, and the shell. Uh, what I really like about this is it gives you like basic shell tools, then it teaches you some bash, some regular expressions, some Python, a little bit of Ruby, um, and some version control stuff, Git. Um, I think that's like the perfect combination of little mini intros, um, and you can kind of use this as a menu. You can kind of just pick what looks interesting. I recommend bash and Python, um, and then probably just grab a uh, book on Go after that if you really want to keep, keep going. Um, User management on Linux and Unix. A new section, cloud computing, which I'll talk about again in a second. But for those of you that are skipping this section, I will wait. Um, chapter 10, logging. Chapter 11, drivers in the kernel. 12, printing. Chapter 13 and a few chapters after that are networking. So TCIP, uh, TCP, IP, DNS, physical networking, IP routing. Uh, single sign-on, email. There's a really meaty chapter on email in here. At my day job, I send, or I'm responsible for infrastructure that sends uh, somewhere between 50 and 150 million emails a day. The way I passed the interview and the way that I started learning about this stuff was by boning up on email topics using the previous edition of this book, specifically the excellent email section. Basic web hosting, uh, like theory and practice, it covers Apache, it covers Nginx, it's great. Um, if you're interested in more of that, I actually have a whole course that kind of focuses on that type of system administration um, and kind of uses a web hosting project to tie together the, the basics of many different things that you need to do as a sysadmin. Uh, for a link to that, uh, should also be in the description. Uh, it's a Udemy course. Um, storage, uh, actually managing hardware on a Linux or Unix box. NFS. Samba, configuration management, virtualization, and a separate chapter on containerization, which I'll get to later. Security, monitoring, performance analysis, data center basics, like how data centers kind of work. And then kind of like a soft skills chapter of like troubleshooting methodology, some career tips, policy, politics, stuff you should know about if you're a working sysadmin. So that's it. Um, this is a dense book. It's like 1,100 pages. It is amazing. So that's what's in it. Now let's talk about um, some of the things that have changed and some of the things that um, I wish were a little bit different about it. Obviously now it's the Unix and Linux system administration handbook. It has become, understandably, very Linux focused. Linux obviously dominates our industry. There's no way around it. But a lot of innovative things that are happening are happening outside of Linux. They're happening in the BSDs, they're happening in uh, what was Solaris. The editors have cut sections on um, what I agree are like just less interesting variants of Unix, like HPUX, AIX, and unfortunately Solaris. Solaris is dead as of <laughs> a few weeks ago. I understand why that stuff got removed. What's actually covered now is just Red Hat and CentOS, which are essentially the same thing, Debian and Ubuntu, which again are very, very similar, and FreeBSD. Now I appreciate kind of like cutting down to just the most popular distributions and like you can figure out changes in other distributions if you need to, that's not that difficult. But the fact that there's only a single Unix operating system left in this book is to me kind of like a, a minor tragedy. And um, I, I think a lot of really innovative things are being done by the BSDs um, and by what Solaris has become, which is now it's Illumos and things like SmartOS. Very, very interesting and innovative things that carry on a lot of the best ideas of Solaris. The BSDs and new Solaris's uh, alike have features that Linux simply does not have. And a lot of the features are, once you taste them, it's hard to live without them. Let me first talk about what I'm happy they added. Um, there's a great Nginx section now in the web hosting section. There is a containerization section that's pretty good. It's again, super focused, hyper focused on Docker. There's better uh, modern file system coverage, like no doubt. Things like ButterFS are not covered in addition to ZFS. There's also really thorough coverage of systemd. Uh, in fact, the entire like boot 
um, section at the beginning has switched to mostly explaining the new systemd world and then a little bit of like sys5 in it and bsd in it for freebsd so it's definitely very systemd centric um, i don't think i know a lot of people are going to be pissed about that but i think realistically working as a sysadmin now just learn systemd you can learn the other stuff as you need it but like that's just the reality we live in now so we should probably just be pragmatic um, that doesn't mean stopping development of other things or, or not using them for our own projects but you're going to be at a workplace that uses systemd it sucks but deal with it there's a new section on cloud operations which i was definitely looking forward to because i do cloud operations that section unfortunately is very thin it's um, really just a very basic introduction to very basic cloud concepts and uh, sort of getting started tutorial for all maybe even too many of the um, the cloud providers that exist so you have something for azure something for aws something for google cloud something for DigitalOcean. i think there's a rack space cloud one in there too or something like that um, but they're like it's like super super basic and you don't need to do it six times so I wish there was other stuff in that cloud section. There's a lot more to say, uh, and maybe like more thorough treatment of a single, um, of a single tech or cloud provider would have been better for sysadmins. Even though I understand that they want to stay kind of like platform agnostic and not promote, you know, one company's uh, thing in in a in a book like this, which should be like an unbiased standard text. So I understand. I wanted to talk about specifically some of the things I would have loved to have seen on the FreeBSD side because it is the only unix left standing in this book uh, freebsd has a lot to offer but i also think uh, looking at what's what solaris has turned into which is illumos and things like smart os um, is very interesting there is still innovation happening there um, likewise i think while it's good that they cover freebsd um, and i understand why you wouldn't cover all of the bsds uh, mentioning the others or at least talking about them for a moment uh, and like their innovations would be nice a lot of the software we use even on Linux comes from FreeBSD comes from Solaris comes from OpenBSD a ton of software you use every day uh, comes from OpenBSD I understand why they're not in this book it's just a matter of market share however it depends on how you measure market share look at the version of your SSH client Chances are you'll see it's OpenSSH. Well, surprise, that's OpenBSD's software project. Some of the things I wish had been covered a little bit better on the FreeBSD side are jails. They're an incredible tool. They were there way before Docker. Um, I mean, LXC, which Docker was originally based on, like publicly is like, we needed a jails-like solution for Linux. You know, that was like GPL. There are some amazing jail management tools and especially combining jails with something like zfs you've got a solution that's really tough to beat even for the most shiny and new and hyped up uh, tech on linux the pf firewall i don't understand why there's not coverage in here of pf that would make sense to cover it pf is amazing um, people on linux i'm sorry like net filter ip tables everything sucks i'm sorry uh that's just like <laughs> that's life on linux it's like we don't get the best tools but we sure have a lot of people. Things that aren't even really mentioned are things like vImage, super innovative virtual networking stack um, that you can do very interesting things with. Containers can have their own entire networking stack. Would have been great to have uh, some basic SQL coverage, like relational databases are a thing that I think every sysadmin should know. So if you're gonna cover Bash and Python and Ruby, like I would just cut Ruby if you're short on space and throw, not that I don't love Ruby, I think, it's a beautiful language um, but replace that with SQL like that's so much more um, relevant to what sysadmins actually need to do on a day-to-day -day basis that actually hiring a, a mid-level sysadmin I don't think I would hire someone that didn't know any any SQL right like you got to know some like that's just are you with me I think Things like uh, more advanced tools like Dtrace, I understand why they're only mentioned a little bit, but Dtrace, uh, as Brian Cantrell says, is like, it's like clean water. It's like light. It's electric light for the first time. You turn it on on a system and you're like, oh my God, we can see, we can finally see what's going on. 
in the fact that I, I looked through the index and I looked for references to Dietrich and there's like two. Dietrich is mentioned on like two pages in a one page introduction to, um, I think it's like the performance analysis section, the like uh, visibility and performance analysis tools. And like, that's cool, but electric light and clean water deserves, <laughs> deserves a little bit more fanfare, I think. like. It, I know that it's hard for this book because it touches on so many different things and he cannot possibly go uh, into depth on many of them. So many things, many important things will just sort of get a mention and like it's up to you to like really dig into them or experiment with them because this can only cover the most important things. Let me talk about the pros of this book. So I've already said that you can lock yourself pretty much into a room for a few months, read through and work through this book and you will be a perfectly usable sysadmin. Like, I actually, I believe that. It's n it is a mile wide, but it's more than an inch deep. Um, so many of the topics that are covered, you will have a good, solid, basic working knowledge of the topics that it talks about in depth. This is a companion. This is something you buy and you keep on your desk for five to 10 to 15 years. Um, like I said, I started reading one of the earlier editions um, as like a hand-me-down from a relative that worked at Cisco, Lucent, and then Cisco. And uh, it's one of the things that first got me interested in IT. But here's to another 30 years of this, uh, this book. If you're interested in grabbing a copy, I would of course appreciate it if you clicked through the Amazon affiliate link I have below. Do it, do it for yourself. <laughs> Every sysadmin should have this book on their desk. And maybe one on your, your nightstand. I hope that's been useful. Uh, if you want more of these, make sure to like, subscribe, uh, and leave a comment if you feel like there's any other critical books like this that every sysadmin should have. Thanks for watching. I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.